Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today, we have Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you this morning. Good morning, Dr. Paul. How are you? Ready and raring to go. Let's do it. Yes. So, uh, well, there was a, somebody who wasn't sleeping on Sunday and yeah, resting terrible. on Sunday. Our military was in operation. And I said, what do you mean our military was in operation? Well, they were participating in a war exercise. They were practicing. No, they weren't practicing. They were killing people. Yeah. Oh, no, they didn't do it. They just uh, told them where to shoot the missiles yeah. and uh, where to get the missiles. I think they got them from the United States. Yeah, they, they got sure them from did. the United States. And we're talking about the uh, Ukrainians yeah. and uh, our friends in Ukraine who uh, uh, criticize us because we don't give them enough stuff fast enough and they're still after more money. And uh, there was something written the other day about at a certain point uh, when the establishment is satisfied with the status quo over there, he's gone. Yeah. Zelensky's gone. Yeah. But anyway, he shouldn't have even arrived under these circumstances, but he wouldn't have if it had not been our policy. And uh, some people would say we are at war. You know, we're building a lot of weapons. We have a lot of, uh, uh, you, you know, co-conspirators and participants and allies. A lot of bombs are being dropped. A lot of people have died. And I believe, this is a personal belief, that none of this would have happened if we did not have an American foreign policy that was very, very encouraging yeah. uh, to this situation. Things would be completely different, and that is why, of course, we exist, is try to point out the foolishness of, uh, an, an, of an interventionist foreign policy, one designed to uh, ignore the Constitution, and one to be designed and pressured by the military-industrial complex, ends up in trouble and a lot of people died. And uh, Americans, uh, there's been some deaths, but uh, it, isn't, it isn't like Vietnam where body bags were coming home, but it's still just as immoral and just as costly and just as antagonizing and they last a long time. So over the weekend, uh, they were <clears throat> looking for some excitement. So we participated with the uh, Ukrainians in uh, sending some missiles uh, in, into Crimea. And, and if, if, if the story is true, that this was directed with our intelligence agencies, at the same time, they knew exactly where they were heading, to a beach, yeah. with people innocently being on the, on the beach. No, there was not a horrendous number of people being killed, but there were some, and children were injured. It was still devastating, but it's the principle of the thing. It was the Ukrainians and the Americans attacked on Russia. And uh, that's the part that people won't say, why did we attack Russia? And they say, well, Russia invaded Ukraine. And here we're trying to restrain them. <clears throat> and they'll go back to all this lying. Yeah. So that is, that is happening. It's, it's big in the news. And there's one question. And, uh, and that is, what's Russia going to do about this? Are they going to twiddle their thumbs and walk away? They might for a day or two ponder it. But there will be something that they're going to do. And uh, who knows, it might be financial and teach Americans that you can't put sanctions and run the world. And, uh, but uh, expect Russia not to play patsy with this and just put up with it. Yeah, I mean, here's Mike Johnson. He's the one who made it happen. He's the one who made this $61 billion happen, which bought these five attack long range missiles uh, that were shot into the, uh, one of them at least shot into the beach on Crimea. This is the Republican leadership. This is the supposed opposition uh, who facilitated the transfer of these weapons uh, against, you know, certainly the better judgment of cooler heads. So five attackums were fired. Uh, we can put up that first clip even. Uh, and they were armed, Dr. Paul, with cluster munitions. These were not warheads. These were not unitary warheads. They were cluster munitions. Cluster bombs are designed to kill, civ or civ to kill personnel. Uh, should be Military personnel, they're banned by 100 countries because they end up getting lodged into the ground and other places, they're unexploded. Kids pick them up years later and get blown to pieces. Horrible, horrible munitions. We don't have the capacity to show the video uh, today because of our internet problems we're having, but you can hear very clearly when the bomb hits, the cluster munitions going off. So here's what happens. Now, it's not just any Sunday, but it's Trinity Sunday for those in the Eastern Orthodox Church uh, the majority of, uh, of Crimea would be that. 
uh, celebrating Trinity Sunday, going to the beach on Trinity Sunday. They get there uh, and they're blown up. Uh, you have uh, f at least five killed. I think several in critical condition. Uh, 124 injured, including 27 children. Uh, two of the children, two of those killed were children. Some of the injuries they say are severe, which you can imagine with the cluster bomb and all that shrapnel going around everywhere. So anyway, children are among the mass casualties after U.S. supplied missile targets crowded Crimean beach. Uh, now the reaction, as you point out, Dr. Paul, from Moscow is they're not very happy at all. If you go to the next one, Moscow is calling it a terrorist missile strike uh, on Sevastopol. A separate Russian Ministry of Defense statement directly accused Washington, quote unquote, flight missions for attack missiles are programmed by American specialists based on U.S. satellite reconnaissance, making Washington primarily responsible for the deliberate missile strike on Sevastopol's citizens the Russian Ministry of Defense said. So they clearly are viewing the U.S. as a central player in this attack. Yeah, you know, we've already talked about this for five to ten minutes and expressed who started what and who's responsible, at least hinted strongly to this and why it's going on. But uh, sadly, though, if uh, you went out and did a polling of the average American who watches TV and watches Fox and all the rest, they, they will still say, well, Russia invaded Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine. They won't talk about a coup that went on and us providing it and, and NATO being involved uh, and, and the, this whole thing. But the propaganda machine is very powerful. That's why the message that we have, I think, is important. And, uh, and we also can work on the sub assumption that if you're working and, do, and making a sincere effort to uh, reveal the truth and not trying to brag that we're the only ones that know the truth, but seeing the truth is, in a sincere way is far uh, superior to those who say, we don't even want to hear the truth. Yeah. And in their hearts, what they try to do is destroy the truth, and that is why the propaganda keeps rolling out and rolling out, and repeated over and over again. And... Uh, and of course, we've we've pointed out that uh, you know once we start sending missiles over there, there's going to be some accidents happen. There's going to be problem. It's going to escalate. But almost, uh, you you know, every day that we talk, there's some point that is uh, subtly at least escalating. Yeah. I mean, it's not de-escalating. Uh, we're spending more money. Uh, we're getting more involved, and there's more antagonism. And uh, the Russians are are getting probably very uh, annoyed, and our propaganda machine here, unfortunately, is really um, not helping us reveal to the country that our foreign policy should be reassessed. And uh, I was sort of kidding. I said, I wonder what the president has to say with yeah. the assumption of, I wonder if he's up on this issue, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, whoever runs the shows, they're up on this issue, and they're very consistently, uh, from, from my viewpoint, it's not it's not pro-American, you know. Yeah. It's it's pro something else. It, to me, it's pro-globalism run by people who don't uh, he, he never heard of the word Thomas Jefferson or the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, yeah. And you use the word escalation, and it is important because this is one. But a lot of people have been asking why this escalation, why these missiles are shot in there, uh, what's going on. Well, you know, there's going to be the big NATO yearly summit coming up soon, and the rumors are that uh, NATO i.e. the U.S. Okay, we know they're desperate. No matter what they do, it's not working. Ukraine is still losing the war. They spent $200 billion, $300 billion. They're still losing the war. They will lose the war. So they're trying to throw a Hail Mary pass. So the, one of the rumors are that they're trying to provoke Russia into a serious reaction to this. And that way they can say, see, look, they, look they're, they're getting violent. They're attacking us. We need to send NATO troops into Western Ukraine because that apparently is the next wonder weapon is NATO troops in Western Ukraine. So they're trying to get Russia to do something dramatic so that they can justify sending these troops into Western Ukraine. That's at least what they're saying. Uh, and I think there's probably some justification for that speculation. Mark Rutte is going to be the new Secretary General of NATO. He makes, <laughs> he makes the current Secretary General look like a dove. This guy's a super, super hawk. He hates Trump. He and Trump hate each other. So you know they're going to try to do some kind of a final move 
before the at least seemingly pretty obvious election of Trump come November. So I think these are dangerous months now. I think NATO's trying to provoke a reaction. I think they are, are too. <clears throat> and I think uh, Russia uh, is, is working hard to have a minimal response. I mean, they can't, they can't not respond because yeah. they have the same political situation in their country. The, the Russian people uh, don't want it. And, and this, is, this is an attack on uh, historically was Russia. Yeah, you know? and, and most time. of the people that are living there are Russian. So the, 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 the response, uh, the, there's political pressure on, on, uh, on, uh, on Russia to respond. And uh, there's a natural desire to do it. And they can get fed up for so long. But it's uh, not only uh, impractical sometimes for them to do too much. Uh, it, it, you know, it could be very, very much. We're worrying about escal escalation. But it looks like the people who do this are they pro escalation? Oh yeah. That, that's that's the big thing, and uh, those are the kind of things that are so hard for me to believe and come around that we would do things even prior to the big wars, even back in World War One. How uh, how how necessary was it for us to do that, and how necessary was it to uh, uh, why in the world did we refuse to even talk to the Japanese who were seeking uh, yeah. a peaceful answer to, uh, to avoiding World War II? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's do a couple more quick things. Let's look at what Sergei Lavrov had to say. If you skip ahead one and do that uh, with his picture. Now, this is a <coughs> quote from the foreign minister, the Russian foreign minister, on here's what he had to say. Uh, well, this is the Ministry of Defense. The U.S. <coughs> is responsible for this massacre, and they will get an answer. All flight missions for American attack of missiles are programmed by American specialists based on their own U.S. satellite intelligence data. Therefore, the responsibility for the deliberate missile strike against the civilian population of Sevastopol lies primarily with Washington, which supplied the weapon to Ukraine, as well as with the Kiev regime, from whose territory the strike was launched. Such actions will not go unanswered. That's the Russian government. Now, if you go to the next one, this will show you this is where the Global Hawk was positioned as the attacks were taken out. You can see those red lines where, where the U.S. surveillance drone Global Hawk was circling and circling and circling, providing intelligence to the Americans who were programming the missiles to hit uh, Sevastopol. The person who wrote this said, provocation is the fact that the U.S. Air Force using Global Hawks to direct the fire of U.S. provided cluster bombs on Russian civilians in Sevastopol provocatory? Are we winning hearts and minds? How hard will Biden continue to poke the bear ahead of the November elections? And uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene retweeted this with some good comments. Now, go to the next one. She makes a couple of good points, Dr. Paul. She says, this should not be happening. Imagine if Russia, using a Russian satellite, fired cluster munitions on a Florida beach. The only border our American military should be, be defending is our own border. And the Constitution mandates the federal government to defend the states. So i say a pretty good quote from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, boy, sounds good. Maybe yeah. we ought to get her on this program. We should, yeah. <laughs> She's absolutely welcome, I think. Uh, you know, the escalation thing, <clears throat> which is hard for me to understand, but the more I look at it, the more I, it, it, it comes across as... It can't be an accident. It yeah. can't be a coincidence. So the escalation there and the plan for escalation there. But the escalation that uh, very few are talking about, and uh, that has to be the escalation against uh, the liberties of American citizens. We're paying. We know yeah. that. Uh, we, we're not sending really boots on the ground, but that's a fib, too, because we have lots of people there, but uh, they're pretty secret right now. But the biggest escalation now in the preparation for what's going on worldwide is registering for the draft everybody as, as they're 18. Yeah. So that, that's 
part of the conditioning uh, that's going on. And, they, and you will hear <coughs> that if you're opposed to that, you're, you're not a very patriotic American. Yeah, uh -huh. You know, if you defend individual liberty and, and the founders, I, I think they skipped that part in the Constitution yeah. that everybody will have a draft at 18 yeah. and you will do what the government told. They didn't even say back then, yeah. they didn't even say the other half of, of, uh, of uh, slavery and control would, is, is our income tax and yeah. things like that. They didn't, but none of that is in the Constitution. I wonder why they don't pay any attention. They, you know, remember we all when I took uh, we raise our hand, take yeah. oath to office, and yet uh, they uh, they always have a oh that's a different document. The yeah. document that changes gradually. You living have to have it. It has to be flexible. Yeah, a living document. <laughs> yeah, <a> living document. <laughs> oh my, oh, well, what a mess. <laughs> well, we'll keep an eye on this, uh, Dr. Paul. Hopefully, it won't escalate. I'm going to close out by thanking all of our viewers. Reminding you of my announcement on Thursday that our great friend and RPI board member, Judge Andrew Napolitano, will be at our conference on August 31st in D.C. He's going to give a great talk on what we've been talking about, which is lawfare, the attacks on the Constitution. Um, and uh, it's going to be great. We'll make some more announcements. I'll put a link in on the description. Get those tickets. Get them while you can get a little bit of a bargain. We're doing an early bird special still for a couple more weeks, so get them now. Over to you, Dr. Paul. Very good. And I, too, am uh, anxious to uh, be at the conference and meet as many people as possible. Because one thing I find out uh, is I get information. People think that we provide it and that helps you. Well, yes, but I think it's mutual because I like to find out what people are thinking about. And you say, well, they'll all be friendly. They're, they're going to agree. Yeah, that's good. But there's everybody has an idea or an approach, and I think that's why discussion and, and pursuing truth is the goal that we should all have. And, and without the idea that we know the absolute truth and you listen to us, then it drifts over into dictatorships because we're imperfect people. But I tell you what, yeah, there's no denying that uh, a decent individual wanting to seek out the differences between peace and war and good and bad, it's possible. And we want to contribute to that, that system that promotes peace and prosperity because I think that is a worthy goal. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.